Welcome to Live Doth, your online Doth Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem, welcome back to today's Daf Yemi, which is Moyet Katan Daf Yit Gimel. We are holding on Yud Beis Amad Beis, two lines from the bottom. In the Mishnah we learned that at times one may perform Malach on Chayla Moyed, for instance, to avoid financial laws, Dover of it, provided, says the Mishnah, Ubalvad, this is seven lines from the bottom, the last line of the Mishnah, Ubalvad Shloyechavin Es Malach Tebemoyed, provided, he didn't pre-plan this Malach, he knows, well, Chayla is a good time, I'm off from work anyways, let me look after the Dover of it, you may not do that, in fact, says the Mishnah, if he proceeds in this manner of a kulon, im kivnu malachtum lemayed, yoi He has to allow the, uh, the merchandise to go bad. He has to take the loss. It's a knast rabbanon to discourage this type of behavior. We want to leave Yom Tov free of any other activities to um, allow and, and enable Simcha as Yom Tov. Says the Gemara two lines from the bottom. Boi minei, Rabbi Yirmiya, Rabbi Zerah. Rabbi Yirmiya asked the following question of Rabbi Zera. Kivan malach Suppose a person does pre-plan that appointment for chalamayid. Umeis, and then he passes away. Mau sheyiknesu b'nav achrat. Did Chazal apply the penalty to his children as well? Meaning, the fellow himself, who purposely planned this work for chalamayid, may not proceed with that work. That's clear. What about his children? And the Gemara later will tell us that the, the Shaila basically is when the Chacham applied this knas, this penalty, is it a personal knas? Or is it something which applies to the item itself? In Yeshiva they would say the Gavra, the person, in which case the son is not responsible, only the father is guilty, not the son. Or is it the Chefts, the item itself, the Mamain, the property, the merchandise? Don't look after it. Let it go bad. In which case, it carries over to the sun as well. Mau sheyikn suban of achrav. Does the knas carry over to the children as well? Now we have some other halachas which are strikingly similar to this one. Cases where a person did something wrong and Chazal applied a knas, an oinish. And the question will be whether we can compare the two. Let's go down the line. Perhaps, if you'll suggest that in the following case, coming up in the Gemara now, the Knas will indeed apply to one's offspring as well. In which case, perhaps you may think to compare our case to that halacha. The Gemara will say, no, you can't compare the two. If you'll suggest that in the case of Tzoram Uizen Bechur, now the halacha is that a Bechur is meant to be given to a coin. Who's meant to take that coin to the base of Migdash? Nowadays, there is no Migdash. The only alternative would be to have it get a mum, so when it gets blemished, he can have that animal even outside the Migdash. Nowadays, that's the only option. But a person may not inflict a mum on a, on a carbon. Russia brings a Pasuk. Mum lo boy. The drush is, mum lo yahaya boy. You can't apply a mum to an animal. To a carbon. It's Isidarais. It's a lot. What if he does do that? Saram Uizen Bukhir. He clips off. He chips off the uh, part of the ear of the Bukhir and makes it into a mum. There's an Isar. Isid Rabbonum. It was a premeditated mum. He may not partake in this Bukhir. What if he passes away? Does that. Knas carry over to his children. Even if you'll tell me it does. Soram Oizen Bukhar Kansu Bunayakrov. Perhaps you can be machalik. You can differentiate between there and here. That's because Mishum de Isura de Raisa, because in that case he committed Isa de Raisa by adding a mum to his carbon. Mash Enkin by the Khalamoyid case. It's not Isa de Raisa. After all, it's a lover of it. It's to avoid financial loss. It's mutter. The problem is, it was premeditated. This is the Rabbanan. So perhaps the Knast, the Rabbanan, only applies to the person himself who committed that wrongdoing, but not to his children. And it's different than Bukhar. 
where it's an Issa de Reis that was done, in which case perhaps Chacham were more machmer. In that case, the Knas would carry over to his children, but not by Chilamayit. Next comparison, Vimtim to Leimar. And if you'll suggest that in the following case, the Knas does carry over, in which case, Mochar Abdoi Leud Gichav. One may not sell his Evet Knani, his non Jewish slave, who can perform mitzvahs while he's in the Israel's possession. He may not sell that ever to the guy who won't allow him to do mitzvahs. He's not allowed to do that. If he does that, there's a knas, he has to go redeem it, as per the sugi in Mesechas Ketan. So even if you'll tell me that in that case, it does carry over to the children as well, they also have to look after this Evet. They have to redeem him. If one sells his non-Jewish Evet, his Evet Kanani, to a non-Jew, Umeis and the seller passes away, just as he has an obligation to redeem, the children as well have to look after the Evet, the Knas carries over. Even if that's true, we're not sure, but even if that is so, you cannot compare to Choyla Moed. Why? Because over there, it's so severe. We're dealing with something more serious, because on a daily basis, he's not allowing the ever to do mitzvahs. Every day that he sits by the guy, that is owned by the he cannot do mitzvahs. So it's an ongoing wrongdoing. In which case, perhaps the Chacham insists that even the children have to go redeem him. What about our case? Dover of it. Chalamoid. Who says? It's so severe, so strict. Hachamai, what would we say by us? Gavra Kanis? Is it a personal penalty? Gavra Kanis Rabban Balasa? This fellow is no longer here. He passed away. Perhaps the Kanas applies to the money itself. This thing can no longer be looked after. So even if it no longer belongs to the perpetrator, it belongs to the children, it has to go bad. But is it because the item is still here? So which way is it? So he presented a very comprehensive question. Rabbi Yimri asked Rabbi Zayr, look, I know about all these other halachas, and perhaps over there we shall say that it will carry over to the children, but that's perhaps because it's more severe. It's the rice, it's hafkam, and mitzvahs on a daily basis. What about Bechel Amayit, which doesn't have those elements? What would you say? Amr later, Rabbi Zayr responds, I have an answer for you. An answer from a Mishnah. Tani Suh, listen to this Mishnah. Sadash and his kafta b'shvius. A sadah which was cultivated on shvius. His kafta means the thorns were removed from the field. Tizor alamatsoy shvius. You can still use that field. You can plant in that field after shvius. There's no knas there. Tesis points out that, of course, he's speaking that the thorns were detached from the ground rather than attached because, in that case, you're uprooting and you're doing a malacha de rice. Of course, the knas would apply. We're speaking about clearing thorns which are just lying around. Okay, so there's no knast here, but Nitaiva, that's what was really enhanced. In Nidaira, Nitaiva Rashi learns is manual fertilization. In Nidaira is another f- method of fertilization they take. The animals bring them over here where they shed their waste. In this case, you actually enhanced the land itself. It's a more uh, substantial type of, uh, of, of effort. We don't allow this field to be worked on after Shviz as well. There's a knas. Because he performed work on Shemit. Okay, that's the Mishnah. We have a Kabbalah from Rabbi Seinu. Hey, Tiva. Suppose he enhanced this field. He fertilized and then he passes away. His son that takes over can plant a field. He doesn't have the Knas applied to him. Alma apparently lived the day, Kansu Rabbanon. The Knas only applies to the father, the one who did the Isser, Lebrei, like Kansu Rabbanon, but doesn't apply to his son, Nachinam, here as well, by Chaylamayit. Lived the day, Kansu Rabbanon. The Knas only applies to the perpetrator, the one who was Machab and Melach to Bimayit. Lebrei, like Kansu Rabbanon, but Chacham does not apply a Knas to his children. Am Rabbi, I have another right. Nakatinan, we have a Kabbalah from our Rabbi Seinu. Suppose a person took taharis, something which is tar, belonging to his friend, and made a tummy. So he inflicted damage, but an unnoticeable damage, not a tangible physical damage, a more of a spiritual damage. So Menatoyer is potter. Midrabbonon, he has to pay up because we don't want people to get into the habit of doing that. 
So here's another example of knas. Timur taroiz of umes, and he passes away. What happens then? Loikonsu b'noi achrov. The knas doesn't carry over to his son. My time, huh? Hezek she'ene nikar. A hezek. Damage which is not visible, not noticeable, such as becoming tummy. Loishmi hezek. It's not really considered hezek and does not carry responsible. There's no chiv to pay for that. Min atayra. Min derabonon. We want to discourage this type of thing. And therefore we apply a knas, we have to pay up. However, lididei kansu rabbonon. It only applies to the perpetrator. Libre le kansu rabbonon banate his son. So bottom line is, we had a shilom, whether a knosa is the rabbonon applied to the person himself and only to that person, to the gavra, or does it apply to the, the mamain, the chayfets, and will carry over to his children as well. We have two rayas, one from Shemitah, one from Metamit where the halacha clearly states it only applies to the person himself, not his children. And that's going to be the conclusion regarding Cholomite as well. His son doesn't have to suffer on account of his father's wrongdoings. We had two cases, Mum of Bechur, we had the case of selling the Eva to a guy, where the Gemara was unsure, but actually Tosis brings that the, the Gemara elsewhere does, does uh, conclude that even in that, even in those two cases, the Knaf does not spill over to his children. Continues the Mishnah. One may not engage in buying and selling. One cannot purchase a house, a slave, an animal. Unless it's needed for Yom Tov use. A house to live in, ever to serve him, etc. Tesis says, of course, there's no chiddush. This applies to any type of item. Why does the Mishnah spell out these examples? Houses, avodim and behemah. Says Tesis, there is a chiddush here. It's a rabusa kamashmal, and even these items are chopper farhesia. It's something which is public, a home, a eved, and perhaps I would think you cannot do that. An it uh, falls in the face of of um, of the um, uh, of, of the of the covered hamoyed. It's mezazel hamoyed. No, you can do that because it's letzorech hamoyed. So you can do letzorech hamoyed, or as the mission continues, oy letzorech hamoycher sheinloi. Or if it's for the sake of the seller. He doesn't have what to eat. Things are tight. And he's selling this item so that he can earn money to um, pay for his yumped of expenditures. And I should point out that we're speaking not necessarily that he doesn't have anything to eat, but things are pretty much tight and this would allow him to be more generous with his yumped of expenditures. That's another reason why he can go purchase a home from that seller who will now benefit and have what to uh, uh, spend for Yom Tov. So again, two, uh, two reasons to purchase on Yom Tov if the buyer needs it or the seller needs the funds for his Yom Tov expenditures. Continues the Gemara. What about in the following case? Bo'imine Rava, he has the Ashayla Mirav Nachman. Schar Pu'ula, She'enloi Mayoichel Mao. What about uh, taking on a job? Hiring oneself, one's self out. Anchelamayi to perform a malach, actually, to offer a job. Can you hire somebody? If this fellow is elamayoichel, he doesn't have, he doesn't have funds uh, to uh, to support his yomtiv expenditures. Mahu, what is the alacha there? So basically, you're asking Yisrael to do work for you, work which is generally also anchelamayi, but in this case, you're hiring him for the sake, with the objective of providing him a salary so that he can. Have for Yom Tov. Is that mutter or not? So in the mission we learned about buying and selling. That's not a uh, genuine, uh, bona fide malach in that case. The mission says clearly, you can do it for this purpose to provide the seller with his uh, with his uh, much needed funds. But here we have a, another I have a case which is a, a bigger chiddush. You're actually doing a malacha. You're working, you're fixing your roof. You're doing a malacha. Can you do that? Can you hire somebody? Can you give him a job to do a real malach and chalamoid if the objective is to provide him with funds for yant of expenditures? Amalei Rav Nachman responds as follows. I have a Mishnah. That you can do that. Tanina. What does it say in our Mishnah? You can buy a home. L'tzorech hamoid. Right? Oy l'tzorech And then it says, She'en loy mayoichal. Sorry, 
So you can buy Lutzerich HaMoyed, or Lutzerich HaMoycher, which means if the seller needs the funds, then the Mishnah adds four words. She'en loy mayoichel. What does the Mishnah mean? It's one case. Lutzerich HaMoycher means he needs these funds because he has nothing to eat. Which is uh, using extra words. We don't need that extra phrase. It would be enough to say Lutzerich HaMoycher. We don't understand. And it means you're trying to supply him with his funds. So, She'en lo ma'yoichel, those four words, la suya ma'yoichel, what are we coming to add with that phrase? Oh, lav la suya yi Apparently, Mishra's coming to include our case. Giving a job, hiring somebody for a malacha and chayla in order to provide him with wages for his yomtiv expenditures. Our Malay Rebbe responds, no, that's not Pshan Mishnah. Pshan the Mishnah. The Mishnah is simply explaining itself. It's one and the same case. Letzorach ha'moichel means she'en lo ma'yoichel, but we're not speaking about hiring a worker to perform a real malacha. So buying and selling for this purpose is mutter, but to do a malacha, just to supply him with funds for yomtiv, that's us. Eis vi'abai comes abai and asks a kasha. He says, "Look, Rava, you're not sure. You're assuming that it's us, sir, to hire somebody if the point is to supply him with money for yomtiv." Listen to this mission. One may not write a loan, loan document on Chayla We may not do Ksiva on Chayla But Vim Einim Aminei. Suppose the lender doesn't trust the borrower. I can't just give him a million dollars without a, without a, a receipt. Or, Oy She'en Lo Oh, he has nothing to eat. Harezi Yichtev. In this case, you can write the Shtar. Now, what does this mean? She'en Lo Mayoichel Lasu Yimai. Who has nothing to eat? Who's short of funds? My love, la suya scharpula. Apparently, we're speaking about the, the scribe, the sefer himself. Who needs these funds for yamtiv? Because as Rashi points out, we cannot be speaking about the loiva, the borrower. Because in the case of the loiva, you can write the star regardless. The mission says, if you don't trust him, you can write a star. Because it's a dover of it, right? Give him the money without a receipt. You're not going to see it again. So to th- that in itself would be reason enough to write the star. You don't need to have this additional element that he has nothing to eat. So apparently when the Brisa adds, when the Mishnah adds these words, She'en lo was speaking about somebody else, the other individual involved here, this cipher, who's short funds, and you can go ahead and hire him for the job. Ask him to write your star in order to provide him funds. My love, aren't we speaking? La suya scharpu, the Mishnah is coming to include hiring the cipher to provide him with money for Yom Tov Shema. I mean, no, it's a right. Our Shailet, it's mutter. Moisar Rav Sheshes asks Rav Sheshes on Abay. How can you say that it's mutter? Listen to this Mishnah in Pesach. So we know that on Erev Pesach, after Chatzos, one must refrain from Malacha. It's the time of the Karm Pesach. It's like a Yom Tov. That's the Kuli Am. The Mishnah speaks about the point of time between the beginning of the day and Chatzos. That's totally in Minig In some places they had a Minig to refrain from Malacha. In some places they did Malacha throughout that period as well. The point of refraining from Malacha during the first portion of Yudalad bin Nisan, Ere Pesach, is to enable a person to allow him time to prepare for Yom Tev. Look after the Pesach, the Matzah, the Mar, the Chametz. So even in a place where they had a Minig to refrain from Malacha, some Malacha is Amut. Chacham Aymrim. Shalosh um nuyas, three uh, professions, oisin malacha bar vipsach matchatzos, can offer their services on erev pesach until chatzos. Who are these three professionals? Hachayotin tailors, vasapern barbers, vakoifsin laundromats. What is the reason for this? Why are these exempted? Hachayotin tailors shekain hediut toifer kedarkoi bechaylo shemoyed. Because look. Erev Pesach is not more severe. If anything, it's more lenient than Chayla Moed. And if we find that these three uh, professions are in business during, during uh, Chayla Moed, if these things can be done in any, uh, in any circumstance during Chayla Moed, so we stretch that to Erev Pesach, we say, you know what? These things are okay. A tailor. There is a, a manner. There's a oifen of, of, of sewing on Chalamoyed Mehetah. We learned this a few days ago. The Hedyet. A layman, a non-professional, can 
so kedarke uh, normally on chalamayid, and therefore uh, on erev pesach it certainly is mutter. You see, the point is that chalamayid is a time of, of yamtum, the time of shvisa from malacha, and when the chachamim applied the din of shvisa to uh, erev pesach, they followed more or less the guidelines of chalamayid. Look, this constitutes kedusha. This constitutes uh, uh, sort of a, a mini yamtiv. And therefore, we follow the same guidelines and whatever is uh, mutter in some fashion of is mutter and pesach all the way. That's the formula we're working with. So, therefore, tailors can perform work on erf pesach and tochatzois just as sewing in some cases is mutter chalamoid. Hasapar and vakaifsim, barbers and laundromats, shekei na boin dinesayam, because we find in some instances you can take a haircut or wash your laundry on chalamoid. Shekei na boin dinesayam, people coming from out of town, vayesim dinesayam, People coming out of prison, mutar and lesapar lekabes, they can take a haircut, they can wash their laundry. Bechol shomoyed. Therefore, we say that on erev Pesach as well, the sapar and the barbers, the kaisin and the launderers can be in business. Okay. Now, says Rav Sheshis, we see in this Mishnah that there is a direct a connection between erev Pesach and chol shomoyed, and a specific type of work can be performed in any which manner, in any way. During Chalamayid, then we say, you know what? You can do it on Arab Pesach regardless. According to you, Abaye, that you may hire a worker if he needs those funds for Yom Tafus. You can do that on Chalamayid. And you can do any Malach if the objective is to provide him with funds. If that's the case. And then, here we go, we found an instance where Malacha can be performed on Chalamayid. Any Malacha. If so, the Hatta should extend to Erev Pesach as well. And there should no longer be any Isra Malacha on Erev Pesach to Chatzais. Because during Chalamayid, any Malacha is mutter under circum- cer- certain circumstances. And according to you, if you're going to tell me that you can hire somebody, give him a job, if he needs those funds for Yom Tavius, you can do any Malacha in this circumstance. On Chalamayid. If so, call Malach is not Melishteru. So getting back to Erev Pesach, all Malach should be Mutter. Because on Chalamayid we find some scenario where any Malach is Mutter. Schar Pulo Shein Lamayachal. So according to you, Abaye, if this is true, that Schar Pulo Shein Lamayachal is Mutter on Chalamayid, in which case we find an instance where any Malach can be done. Right? Under certain circumstances, any malacha can be done in Chalamayid. If so, Erev Pesach, which is a down, a downgraded, which is a step down, which is more called than Chalamayid, we should allow that malacha to be done regardless of the circumstance. Just as the Bryson connects Erev Pesach to Chalamayid regarding tailors, barbers, and laundrers. Mask of the Rav Papa. Comes Rav Papa and he asks the Kasha on who? On Rav Sheshis. It's like a chain reaction here. <laughs> You're asking on Abaye. If what Abai is saying is true that a person can hire himself out, if it's Elam Ayoichal, if that's the case, then how's, the, how's there an Issa Malach on Erev Pesach? So you're asking on Abai. I'm going to ask on you, Rav Sheshis. If you're telling me that there's a direct correlation between Erev Pesach and Chayla Mayed, I'll give an example of a Malach which all agree, all agree, Midan Chayla Mayed. It's not connected to Abai, to Awashayla. There's a universally accepted case. Halacha of a malacha that can be done chalamayid. And according to your Rav Sheshis, that we meant to connect Erev Pesach to chalamayid, it should be mutter in Erev Pesach as well. Elamiyat, if that's the case, if that connection is true, that formula holds true. That Erev Pesach draws from chalamayid, binyan mystery. You can build an Erev Pesach, build a house. Why? Because we find in some instance, in some form, building is mutter in chalamayid. Shukain kaisil hagayil shesarab. You have a wall that's leaning into the street and places the passerby in danger. So you can demolish and rebuild it normally to avoid danger. So since we find some case of building which is Mutar Chalamayid, according to your formula, we connect Erev Pesach to Chalamayid, you can build Erev Pesach. Build a house. Of course, that's not true. So apparently there's something wrong with this connection, with this formula. Furthermore, Moscow for Ravina, Ravina adds to the kash. Elamiyata, according to you, that we connect Erev Pesach to Chalamayid, lavalalishtari. 
any sefer can sit down and write on Erev Pesach. Why? Because we find that there's some writing permitted in Chalamoyed. In some instances, in the case of Dabar Avid, Shekin Kais for Kiddushin Nashim, you can write a document for Kiddushin. To Mekadesh Isha, to concern that somebody else might take her first, as a Dabar Avid, Git, and you can write a Get, to concern that the husband might leave town, leaving his wife Aguna, Vishayvar, and you can write a, a receipt for the Loiv, otherwise perhaps you won't see the money. So these are cases of Dabar Avid, which are Mutar Chalamoid, in which case, Writing should be mutar in Erev Pesach regardless. If writing is mutar and in some instances, we should stretch that heta to Erev Pesach. So basically what they're asking is, you Rav Sheshe seem to connect Erev Pesach to Cholamoyed. That was your basis. That was the basis for your kasha on Abaye. Again, let's go back a second. We had a shayla. The Mishnah speaks about buying and selling. Lutzer Cholamoyed, that's mutar. If you need the home, you need the property, you need the item for Cholamoid, or the Tzorach HaMoicher, who has nothing to eat. Okay? Then we had a Shaila. What about doing a real Malacha under these circumstances to provide the worker with wages, with funds which will provide for his yomt of needs? That was a Shaila. Rabbi suggested, no, you can't do that. Abaye says, of course you could. Avariah, the Mishnah speaks about allowing the Soifer to write a star if he, uh, if he needs the funds for Yom Tif. Okay? That was a biased conclusion. You can do that. Comes of Sheshis. Look, we have a price, a Mishnah. You can do things on Erev Pesach as long as you can do them in some form of Chalamoyed. Because the Kedush of Erev Pesach, the Yom Tif status of Erev Pesach is related to the status of Chalamoyed. What's mutter by one is mutter by the other. Now, if you can do a malacha to earn wages on Chalamayid, you can do any malacha on Erev Pesach. Because if malacha is mutar on it's mutar Erev Pesach. Apparently, what you say, Abai, is incorrect. Apparently, it's not true. You can't. You can't hire yourself out on Chalamayid if the point is just to earn those wages. That was Rav Sheshis' kasha. Come, Rav Papa and Ravina, ask on Rav Sheshis. One second. You're working with a premise that Cholomoyed is connected to Erev Pesach. And whatever is Mutar Cholomoyed under certain circumstances is Mutar Erev Pesach blank check? And that was the basis for your Shaila and Abaye? I have two examples. Building, writing a get, a shaver, Kedusha Isha, where all agree it's Mutar Cholomoyed. Sakan, Adabar Avid. And um, of course, there's no reason for it to be Mutar and Erev Pesach. And we don't find that it's Mutter Erev Pesach. So apparently there's something wrong with this formula, with this connection between Cholomoyed and Erev Pesach. Elam Rav Ashi, I'll explain to you what's going on. You cannot connect the two things. You're right, you can't connect Moyed, Aarba, Asar Karamis. You mean to ask from Cholomoyed to 14, to Erev Pesach? Two different systems, unrelated to each other. Moyed Vishim Tirchahu. The reason to refrain from Allah on Chalamoid is to avoid exertion at Tircha. We want you to enjoy your Yom Tov. Don't be distracted by work. And therefore, if you're facing financial loss, Chacham Malarid, explains the Ritva, there's no greater distraction than <laughs> impending disaster. So take care of what has to be taken care of and come back. So it's a formula of, of Tircha. The formula is Simchas Yom Tov. It's a call, it's a day of kedusha. You're not meant to do anything. Ravals malacha o tercha. Anything that distracts from the simcha siyamt, from the kedusha siyamt. That's chalamayid, and therefore, although typically we don't do work on chalamayid, but davar avid is mutter. You can perhaps hire somebody to do work if he needs the money for yamt, right? Because. Because it's not a, it's not going against Simchas Yantif. It's enabling Simchas Yantif. So that's when it comes to Cholamoyed. Arba also, but Erev Pesach. It's a different system. It's based on other guidelines. Mishum Tzorich Yantif. Why do we refrain from Allah on Erev Pesach? As not to interfere. So you don't interfere with the Hachanah, preparations for Yantif. You have time to look after the matzah, the mar, the karm, pesach, the 
Mishum Tzorach Yom Tov. To allow preparation for Yom Tov. Me did the Tzorach Yom Tov Shor Something which is considered a preparatory activity for Yom Tov. It prepares for Yom Tov. The tailors, the launderers, the barbers. That's Mut. That's why the Bryce said connected to Chalamoy. Look, you can do sometimes, uh, you can do tailoring on Chalamoy because it, uh, it's enhancing the Yom Tov. And therefore, in Erev Pesach as well, it's enhancing the Yom Tov. It's Hachonas Yom Tov, it's Tzorach Yom Tov. But me did the love Tzorach Yom Tov, but something which doesn't conform to that. It's not considered Tzorach Yom Tov, such as Dover of it, Le Shor Rabban, Rabban didn't allow it. Because at the end of the day, it's interfering with your Hachonis. You need time to prepare for Yom Tov properly. Says the Ritva, if so, even a Dover of it will be Asr Erev Pesach. It's different than Chalamoyed. On Chalamoyed, the point is, don't interfere with Simcha Yom Tov. Keep, keep to the spirit of the day. It's a Yom Kaddish. It's a Yom Tov. Don't do Malacha. Don't do Tircha. But a Dover of it, a situation of Hefzit, which in itself is a distraction from Simcha Yom Tov. Go look after your item. Go look after your merchandise and come back and enjoy the Yom Tov. On Erev Pesach. It's a different system. We need time to prepare for Yom Tov properly. So something which is considered Tzorech Yom Tov, something which is, uh, is a Hachana for Yom Tov, the tailors, the barbers, the Kaivis, that's Mozart. But something which is merely to avoid financial loss, there's no hater for that on Erev Pesach. What about what about schar uh, pula she'en lo hiring somebody in order to provide him with wages for yamtiv? That's also mutter. Why? Says Rashi, five lines from the bottom of the Amid. Mishum tzorach yamtiv shori kigoyin hani gimel niyos, like these three professionals, the barbers, the tailors, v'suloi and nothing else. Right? They can't rebuild the wall. They can't write the kedushin nashim. Even those things that are mutter chalomai, they're not mutter of pesach. It's a different system. It's a different reason. As Rashi vuadin. Same would apply to a person who has nothing to eat. He's lacking funds for yamtiv expenditures. He can do work on Erev Pesach. Why? There's no greater Tzorech Yamtiv than acquiring funds for yamtiv expenditures. So that's Mutter as well. So bottom line is, it seems from our Gemara that we pass in our Shailah. Yes, you may hire a worker. If the point is to provide him with funds, you can do this on Chayla Moyet. You can do it in Erev Pesach. But don't connect the two things. Erev Pesach is because of Tzorech Yom Tov. We want to give you time to prepare for Yom Tov. And therefore, says the Gemara, a Dover of it would not be Mutter in Erev Pesach. As opposed to Cholomoyed, which is a Yom Kaddish, says the Ritva. The point is, keep to the Yom Tov spirit. Keep to the Simcha of the Yom Tov. Anything that enhances Simcha's Yom Tov is Mutter, including looking after a Dover of it. Okay, so conclusion. Purchasing on Chalamoyed is motor l'tzorech chalamoyed or to help the seller acquire funds that he needs for his yomtev expenditures. And as we conclude, the same would, would apply to scharpul hiring somebody, giving him a job to do on Chalamoyed to perform any malach if the point is to provide him with badly needed funds for his yomtev expenditures. Zak de Mishnah. So on Chalamoyed, we refrain from malachas and also from exertion. Even if it's a non milacha exertion, that's also problematic on Chalamoyed because it detracts from Simchas Yom Tov. Ein mefanim nebais lebais. You can't clear stuff from one house to another, situated at a distance. It's tircha, which you shouldn't be doing on Chalamoyed. Avul mefanu l'chatzer, but you can clear merchandise out of the yard. The Gemara will explain what this means. Likewise, Ein Mavin Kalim Beis Umen. One should not pick up Kalim from the craftsman's uh, shop, from the uh, repair shop. He shouldn't do that in Chalamoid, unless he needs it for Yom Tov use, of course. However, in Chayish Lam, if he's concerned about their safety, he's concerned about them getting stolen in the, uh, in the shop, let him just bring it over to another uh, yard nearby, so minimize your efforts, uh, just uh, secure them and then go home. The Amrus Reisha ain't mefan and klal. Mishnah begins, you can't be mefan, you can't clear items from one house to the other. And then the Mishnah says, but you can take it out to the Chatzah. What's the difference? The Gemara understood at this point that we're allowing 
from a bias to a chotza situated at a distance from that bias. So what's the difference if it's a house to a house or a house to a chotza? I'm not bias, no. Sefer Asan, the Sefer speaking, le bias she So what's happening is, you have a bias in a chotza, and you're taking things from the bias just out to the yard, which is just a slight effort. It's not considered a tircha, and it's mutter and chalamay. So the bottom line is, close by is mutter, but to do a full-fledged moving job is us. Robert challenged us with the following question. Tznan, and now which we learn, you cannot pick up your kalim from the repair, uh, repair shop. We have a kash, a stira, from the following, I think it's a mishnah, mishnah in Pesach. One can deliver a kili to the base of Uman. He can pick up kalim. Even though he doesn't need it for chalamayid. So here it says, you can't deliver, you can't pick up anything from the base of Uman. And now, Mishnah, we learn. Uh, sorry, in the Mishnah, in the Brisa day, we learn we could. We could deliver, we could pick up, even if it's not Lutzer And over here we learned that you may not pick up kalim from the base of Uman. So we responded, we answered, Rabbis Kasha as follows. It depends what we're speaking about. Kan bar ba'asar. The Mishnah is speaking about Erev Pesach. Erev Pesach. You can do a tircha as long as it's not malach. Uh, exertion tircha was never included in the Isser Erev Pesach. Kan ba'chay l'shal moed. Our Mishnah is speaking about chayla moed. Where even tircha is problematic because it detracts from simcha asyamt. Iboy same another terrorist. Hava ba'chay l'shal moed. Both Mishnahs are speaking about chayla moed. Our Mishnah, which doesn't allow picking up items from the base of Uman, is speaking where he trusts him. And he feels that it's safe and secure in the Uman's possession. Therefore, there's no excuse. There's no reason to pick it up. The Mishnah in Psachim is speaking where he doesn't trust the, the Uman. Therefore, he wants to get it out of there as soon as possible. It's a davara of it. And therefore, you can go pick it up. That Tanya, as we learn in the following price, maybe in a Kalim and base of Uman. On Chaylamayid, one can pick up Kalim from the craftsman's uh, you know, shop. Could go and cut, for instance, a pitcher and base a cutter from the pitcher uh, uh, shop. We're speaking that he needs these things for Chaylamayid. Because a glass cup and base a zagag from the, uh, the uh, glass maker's uh, shop. Aval, but don't be involved in uh, picking up things which are not. Lutzurah Chaylamayid. Lloyd Semer, base a can't pick up wool from the. Uh, Dye the uh, the coloring the dye shop. Vloy kalim the base uman. Nor can he pick up kalim from the base uman. Vim enloy mayoychal. If the uman, the the professional, uh, is short funds for yamtiv expenditures, nicely scharis, he can pay him for the job. Uman nichay etzla and he leaves the item with him until after yamtiv. Vim enem I mean, what if he doesn't trust him? Malicha bebayis asamachla. So he pays him, takes out his item and puts it next door where it's safe and secure. But if he's concerned that they might be stolen over there, in that case, it's a davar avid. So you can bring it back home discreetly. So it's clear in this price huh, that although typically we avoid transporting things unnecessarily, but if it's a case of any mino, if he doesn't trust him, in this case, he's allowed to bring it home. So that's the terrorist avakasha, trusting him or not trusting. Tirat the mavi. So you've addressed the steer regarding picking up items. And now Mishnah where you're not meant to pick up is speaking where you trust the fellow. Why not leave it there? The Mishnah Psachim is speaking where you have no trust and therefore you're allowed to pick it up. That answers that kash. and kash. What about the steer regarding delivery? Because in the Mishnah Psachim it says you can actually bring things to the base of Uman as well. And in our Mishnah we learn you can't even pick up you can't even pick up items from the shop. Certainly you can't deliver it. There's no reason to deliver. Not meant to do the work in any case. And there's no double, there's no reason to bring it. And in the Mishnah Psachim, we learned you can actually deliver things. And you can't tell me because he doesn't trust him. Well, that's not a reason to bring things to him. So that stira is still, out, still outstanding. Apparently the correct and clear approach is like we said originally, like we answered the first time around, uh, different dates. The Mishnah Emayit Katan is speaking on Chaylamayit. Don't deliver, don't pick up unless it's absolutely necessary. The Mishnah Psachim, or the Bryson Psachim, is speaking 
a matter of Pesach, where all we have is an Isra Malacha, which will take you away from the Erev Pesach preparations. But Tircha is Mutter, therefore, pick up, drop off, deliver, no problem. Zagdemish, Machapin is Akzias Bekash. Here we have another example of Tircha and Chalamayit. He sees a rainstorm approaching. He has kzios. Figs drying outside. He'll have to cover them up. Mechapen is kzios bekash with a layer of hay to protect them from the rain. You could even thicken that layer to really protect them. Even though it involves a greater measure of exertion and terch. Getting back to buying and selling on chalamayit. Moichir peris. Those who are involved in selling peris. Now by the way, peris doesn't just mean fruits. It means any edible item, any foodstuffs, fruits, or grain, you can, uh, you can sell that on chalamoyed, ksus, clothing, with kalim, moichrem betzina, all these moich, all these merchants are moichrem betzina to chalamoyed, they can sell discreetly, without fanfare, a small scale um, arrangement, letzor chalamoyed, if they're selling for the sake of chalamoyed. So why does it have to be betzina? Let's take a look at Rashi, 12 lines from the top. Betzina, says Rashi, to avoid any impression of impropriety. People shouldn't think, well, he's buying for after Yom Tov, so keep it quiet, keep it discreet, discreet, keep it small scale. Continues the Mishnah. The hunters, but the Shoshis, those who are engaged in crushing kernels for, uh, for the making of cereal. The those who are engaged in crushing beans uh, splitting them to two. In any case, all these food processors, Oysen Bitsina, Letzorich HaMoyed, they as well can engage in their work quietly, if it's Letzorich HaMoyed, to supply people with their Yom Tov needs. Rabbi Yassi, Oymer, Hei Mechmir al Atzma, no. Uh, the actual Minak HaMokim is that people who are Machmer, these merchants generally don't engage in these uh, forms of work, these forms of activity, even Letzorich HaMoyed. Now, we had two terms. In the beginning of the Mishnah, Mechapen and Saktsiyas, that was the Tanakama. Rabida added the word Ma'avin as well. How do we define Mechapen? How do we define Ma'avin? There was Machlekes, Pligiba, Machlekes between Rabbi Chia Bar Abba and Rabbi Asim, Vitavayu. And they were both discussing, they were both arguing, they both had different versions. Mishmei the Chizkiyo of Rabbi Yechon, as per how Chizkiyo and Rabbi Yechon explained the Mishnah. So Chizkiyo and Rabbi Yechon explained the Mishnah in a certain way, and there were two versions of how they explained the Mishnah. Chadamar, one version was, Mechapen means Aklushi, a thin layer of hay over your figs. That's the Tanakam. And Rabbi does make, he says you can even be Ma'avin. Ma'avin means a smuchi, a thicker layer to really protect those figs. The Chadamar, the other Amur, had a different version of how to define the Mishnah. The word Mechapen mentioned by Tanakam means, Ben Aklushi, Ben Asmuchi, whether a thin or a thick layer, it's irrelevant, it will be Mutter. When a reader comes and he says, Af ma'avin, that means, Oisa, Oisa, Kri, you can actually pile the figs properly, Kri, like a, uh, like a pile of, of grain, in which case the upper layer protects the lower layer, so it's more protected from that rain, and then you can cover it with hay. Tanya, we have a brysa in support of the second version. Ma'avin means, Oisa, Oisa, Kri, you pile up the figs, Divir Yehuda. Continues the Gemara. Moichre peres, Xus vekelem, Moichrem betzim. Rabbi Yisi adds, Hey, Mechmir al Atzman. Now, was Rabbi Yisi a Machmer or was Rabbi Yisi being Mekel? Again, Tanakama says, you can be engaged in selling all these items, let's say Rechamayit, provided that it's done bit sinner discreetly. Rabbi Yisi adds the words, Hey, Mechmir al Atzman. What does he mean to say? Does he mean to say that I agree in principle that it needs to be done bit sinner, but you should know that the merchants around where I live were Machmer, not to engage at all in buying and selling. Is that what he meant? Or does he mean like this? It's coming to be mekel, to be lenient. Al Pitin, you don't have to do it sinna. Look, it's a Tzarech HaMoyed. Blank check, go and sell. No reason to hide what you're doing. But actually, you know, the merchants will machmer to do it sinna. So actually, he's being mekel. You don't need to do sinna. The sinna element is not required, but it was actually done by the merchants as a chumrah. He boilu the Bnei Yeshiva Adashah. When Rabbi Yisrael says, Hein machmir al he means like have Abdi Klal. The merchants around where he lived wouldn't engage in commerce at all. So that was their Khumra. So Abu Dinat's Mutter provided that it's Bitsina, but they, they refrained at all. Or did he mean to say Dabu Abdi Bitsina? That technically it doesn't have to be Bitsina, but they were machmi to do Bitsina. But Abu Din, you don't need Bitsina. Tashma, we have a right from a price. 
What, is, what did Rabbi Yisim mean? Baisa says, Moichir Peris, Ksus Vekelem, Moichir Betzina, Betzorach Hamoyed. This is Tanakama speaking. You can buy and sell Betzina, Betzorach Hamoyed. Both elements are needed for Yom Tov use and discreetly. Rabbi Yisim, Oimer, Tagare Tveria, the merchants in Tveria, Hey, Nechmir and Latzman, they were Machmar themselves, Shaloyu Moichir Kalikir, they wouldn't engage in selling at all. So it's pretty clear what Rabbi Yisim meant. This is what he had in mind. That the Mayukhim were machm not to engage at all in commerce. But theoretically, he agrees with the Tanakhama that in order to allow this type of activity, it has to be Latzerah Hamoid and Bitsina. Continues the Bryson. Sadei Chayes Vaifais, Vidogim, all these trappers, animals, fish, Sadan Bitsina Latzerah Hamoid, they can do their, their thing Latzerah Hamoid, Bitsina. Rabbi Yisri Emer, Sadei Aka, the hunters in Aka. Hey, Nachmer Latzman, they were machmer shloyu tzadn kalikar. They wouldn't engage in hunting at all. Third example is the shushi, the crushers, the grain crushers, who would make the chilka. The more soon explains what this means, taking the uh, the kernel crushing into two, targus into three, betisni into four. So all these grain processors, doishish and betsina, they could do their thing quietly. That's how Rechamoy. The Rishi Yomer, the Shushet Tzipori, the fellows in Tzipori. Hey, Nechmir Alatzma, they were machmash loyu the Shdoish and Kaliker. They wouldn't engage in this at all. So it's pretty clear. Rishi had in mind. Apidin, it's mutter if it's betsina. But I happen to know that all over town, the merchants are generally machmer to refrain from all these types of activities in Chelamoy. We discussed. Chilka targis v'tisne. What are these things? Amar Abay. Chilka means chada. You take one kernel of wheat, letarte, and split it into two. Targis means chada l'klas. Split it into three. Targis is try, right? Into three. Tisne means chada l'abar into four sections, in which case it was suitable for, you know, for use for, for cereal, like oatmeal. Kiyos Rav Dimi Amar. Rav Dimi came here a different interpretation. He says the word chilka doesn't mean the kernel of wheat split into two. It means kunta. A kernel of spelt. Mesvig, of a kashmir of dimis pshat. How can you say the chilka means a kernel of spelt? The mission says like this. Chilka targus v'tisni. These three items, t'mein b'chol are susceptible to tuma anywhere they are. Meaning, we assume that they got wet because generally they need to be soaked to enable this type of processing. So once it gets wet, we know it's huksha l'kabal tuma, becomes susceptible to tuma. So the assumption is that Chilka, Targa, and Tisni have been soaked and are Mukhshul Kabotum. That's the mission. Now let's analyze. Bishlam Ilaman the Omar Chadla Tart at last Larbo coin Abaya works. Abayu says that these three things, Chilka, Targa, and Tisni means a kernel of wheat crushed into two, three, or four sections. And that requires soaking beforehand. That's why the mission says they're considered Tummy, they're Hukshul Kabotuma. Whoever it is, a town or city, this kasha because it got hushah got wet. El mandomer kunta but kunta of dimi that chilka doesn't mean a crushed kernel of wheat, which requires soaking. Rather, it means a kernel of spelt which wasn't soaked. Amai tmein mechal mokim wise in kabel tuma. Hello, yis kasha never got hushah never, never got wet. And says the gemara could go into mekalf. And we're speaking that it was shelled, it was peeled, the, the uh, skin was taken off. This spelt kernel, the e lav the sharlu b'maya, because if they wouldn't have soaked it in water, like have a makaf, it wouldn't properly peel. So the fact is, we know that it got wet. Va my curly chilka. Why do we call this this kernel, this spelt kernel, with a lotion of chilka? Some of it means taking a wheat kernel, splitting to two chilka, chelak, <laughs> splitting to two. But a kernel of spelt, why give it the name chilka? Coin to me, the shaka chilkayu because it's smooth element was removed, meaning the skin was removed. Mesri, you have another Kashmir of Dimi, who maintains that Chilka is a kernel of spelt. Hanoi de mena dogan. person makes a nether to refrain from all forms of grain, dogan. What's included in that? Asur afa pula mitzriyamish. Even beans are included. Not only the five grains, but even beans. Pula mitzri, a certain type of bean, which has been dried out, it's considered dogon. They pile it in a pile. It's it's ready for consumption. But if it's still uh, moist and fresh, that's not yet considered dogon. It's not yet meant to be piled, not meant to be consumed. So it's not included in the term dogon. What else is imutter? Umutter ba'iris. You can have rice. Bechilka. 
Vitargus Vitisni. You can have these crushed kernels. Because they're no longer considered dogan. They're not dogan in its original form. Of course, you still make a mazainus on it. But by Nidorum, we follow Losha Bnei Adam. What people have in mind in their form of language, the word dogan is referring to the kernels, the grain in their original form. So once it's been crushed, turned into oatmeal, it's mut. Let's analyze the Brysa based on Rav Dimi and Abayi's discussion. Bishleim elamad amar chadlet tarti, chadlet las, chadlar bo. According to Abayi, it makes sense. That chilka means one into two, targis means crushed into three, tisne means split into four. Shopper, I understand why the Brysa, why the Mishnah, no longer considers these substances to be dagan. The naf, kuluhum, etar is dagan, they're no longer considered dagan. In its original form, El Lamanda Makunta, but according to Rav Dimi, that the word Chilka is referring to a plain kernel of a spell, Dagan Malyud. It's plain grain. It's the original form, Kasha. Indeed, it's a Kasha. Let's go back to Chalamayid. Rav Huna, Sharlu, he gave a hat to, he allowed, Lahanu Krufyaisa. He allowed these um, spice sellers, Lameza, Lizbuni, to go around selling their wares, Kiruchayu, normally. Be shook out in the marketplace without vetsina. Uh, sell it the way you usually do. Let's hear a chamarit. Eisur of Kahana, of Kahana, a kasha from a price. Chanos besuchel is stuffed. There's a store that's open to an alleyway. Pesach ben El Kedar can open the doors, close them, no problem. Because by default, circumstantially, it's uh, low key, off to the side. It's not going to create zilzal, lack of appreciation or respect for chamarit. But if it's Pesuchel Shesaram, open to the main thoroughfare, you have to downgrade. Pesach Achas, Fanel Achas. So you leave one door open and one door shut, so sort of halfway open, halfway closed, to keep it low key, in keeping with the spirit of Yamtiv. Ve'er of Yamtiv Achon Shochag, but come the last day Yamtiv. So Erev of the last day of Pesach or Sukkot. Moitzi or Ma'ater, as Shukri or Erev of Peres, now everybody knows you're selling for Yamtiv. You can bring out the wares, bring out the food, and be ma'ater, adorn the streets, the shukah yair, the marketplaces of Paris, b'shvil kavod yom tov in honor of the last day yom It's pretty clear from the Brisa so, that only in this case we play kavod yom tov in. You can only publicly sell your stuff on chalamoyed if it's clearly for the sake of yom tov. Shaloyim we play kavod yom tov but if it's just in the middle of Chalamayid, it's not clearly in preparation of Yom Tov, you can't do it publicly. So how could Rav Huna allow the spice sellers to go around selling their spice openly? Like Kasha, the answer is, it depends what they're selling. Hobe Peris, they're selling Peris, in which case Rashi says, this is a chashat, the person might think, well, he's selling it, he's buying it for after Yom Tov, because Peris lasts long term. So there, you have to minimize, be discreet, don't make, don't make a scene. Hobe Tavlin, but if they're selling spices, Spices are something that must be kept fresh. And it's pretty clear that you're not buying it for after Yom Tov. So there's no chashad in this case. There's no concern of people thinking that he's preparing for after Yom Tov. In this case, as Rashi, Afilu Befer Hesius Mutter, and that was the reason why Rav allowed the spice sellers to make their rounds selling their spice the way they normally do. Hadran Allah Mishafa. Okay, let's do a quick chazor of today's daf. Davar Aved is mutar chalamayid, but if not if it's pre-planned and premeditated. There's a knas. You have to let it, have to let it uh, go sour. Does this knas apply to one's child as well? Passes away, his child takes over. Does it apply or not? We have two rayas that it does not. We have a similar halacha by Shviyas, where a person does a malacha. Does a knas apply to the person, but not to his son? He's matamit harish al Knas is applied to him, he has to pay up, but not his children. Likewise, by Chalamoyed, the Gemara assumes the same thing applies here. The Knas applies to the perpetrator, but not to his children. We had two more cases. The Mum applied to the Bukhar, and Ebed sold to a guy. The Gemara figured perhaps in that case the Knas will carry over. Lamaisa Tesis brings the Gemara that it does not. What can be purchased on Chalamoyed? You can buy things like Tzorah Chalamoyed, even homes, Avod and Behema, certainly food. And you can also do it if it's Tzorah Chalamoyed. To provide the seller with his badly needed funds to supply his yumtiv expenditures. He must do a bit sinna. We have two exceptions to that. That's the tavl that we just discussed, or Arab Yamtiv Achan, in which case it's apparent that it's for the sake of Yamtiv. Rabisa brings several cases of merchants who are machma to refrain from all these types of activities on Khalamayid. We discussed hiring somebody 
If the point is to provide him with funds for Yom Tov, you can do it in Erev Pesach, you can do it in Chalamoyed. You meant to avoid Tircha and Chalamoyed as well, uh, transporting things uh, to, to a, at a great distance. Amakim Karev is Mutter. What about uh, bringing and, and delivering Kalim to the base of Uman? So bringing to the base of Uman is Asr. Bringing back would be a problem, except in the case where he doesn't trust him, or he's concerned about the safety of his item, and of course the Tzarech HaMoyed would be Mutter. Covering up Ktsiyos to protect them from the rainstorm would be Mutter, according to Tanakama, Mechapen is Mutter, according to Wamshan, Dikmar means thin or a thick layer of straw. Would be the ads, Afma Avan, pile of the figs, so they're properly protected. All the best to you and much at slacha.